Hello viewers, I hope you're all well today. All the usual stuff out of the way first. Thank you very much for tuning in, it is appreciated. If it's the first time watching our channel or you're a regular viewer, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It's interactions like that that help the channel stay well up in the YouTube rankings. And just as, if not more importantly, it's customers, not just visitors to our web website and our Optics Weekend that help the channel can continue to continue and I can come up with new products, new ideas, like uh, the telescope we're looking at today. And for those of you who saw a recent video about the Celestron Astromaster LT60AZ, you're not seeing double. This is the LT70 version. So it has the same focal length, but a different F ratio of F10. So it's a 700mm focal length and a 70mm aperture with two modified achromatic eyepieces giving 35 and 70 magnification and you can see a, a red dot finder there and for a telescope of this size those are sensible magnifications you can if you want add a, add a barlow or you can maybe upgrade the, eye, upgrade the eyepiece but 35 and 70 times is plenty to get you going now it has the same AZ mount as the the 60 millimeter version. It does come with an accessory tray. I've not put it on there, but it does come with one. And it's a fairly compared to, as per the 60 millimeter, a fairly. It, it's not a substantial AZ mount, but it does the job on a budget. So it's not as, as sturdy as the one you get with the Astro Master 70, the non LT version, or for example the Newtonians like the 130. So I'll just turn it around so you can just see from a different angle. See how, it, see how easy that is to move? Very easy to, to uh, move around. So let's just check. Oh yeah, there we are. We're nearly in view. So yeah, uh, last uh, the other night I, I had a, a quick test of this scope and there was something that I looked at that I didn't think I would be able to see with such a small telescope. Now I know a lot of you do stop watching my videos after about halfway so please uh, carry on watching and you might get a surprise of what I could see in in great clarity last night. So it comes with a 90 degree it's an erect image diagonal, but it, but it's but it's a mirror, so the left and right will be opposite, but th that doesn't really matter in in astronomy too much. You'll soon get used to that. But you can, if you want, fit a prism diagonal or a forty five degree, and I have I have checked, and there is plenty of focus travel if you want to do that. Excuse me while I knock the tripod over. I'm a true professional, me. Just turn that round so you can have a look from another angle. So. The other night I, I took this out and uh, it's just uh, around about six kilograms let me just check or, or, uh, with the tripod so it's a very lightweight setup so yeah this is a great starter scope in this price range of uh, as of the time of this video just under 140 pound you get everything you see with it the aluminium tripod the scope the finder the red dot finder couple of modified achromatic eyepieces of 10 and 20 millimeters so I thought I'll just clear night I'll just have a quick look and there was some lovely detail on the moon as per the 60 millimeter yes there is some chromatic aberration it's not this is not a high-end scope although what I saw later uh, may contradict that and yes you could see the cloud banding on Jupiter and three of its uh, brightest satellites. The fourth one must have been either behind or in front, um, just out of shot. But I thought I'll, um, I'll check a couple of double stars and just see what it's like. And so I had a quick look at Alberio in, in Cygnus. It's, it's on the way down now, but you could quite easily see it. And uh, you know, lovely blue and gold or blue and yellow or green and blue. A lot of people have different uh, interpretations of the colours but by all means have a look and while I was looking at that I thought I'll just check for coma smearing on, on the edge of the view and I was quite surprised it was, there was hardly any noticeable coma until you got to the outer 10% and for a budget scope 
that is really good. Now just change the angle a bit so you're not getting bored of the same. Yeah, looking back at us. Are we still in view? Just a quick adjustment. And yeah, so what I looked at, I thought I'll give myself a challenge. And this is a double star where in the book, in, in, the, in, in the books or online, it will say that uh, you, a good uh, good quality 3 inch telescope or 76 millimeters or 80 millimeters or so is required to split this double and it is Polaris and uh, the magnitude of that I think it's about 2.1 for the primary and for the secondary 9 um, so there's quite a magnitude difference between them and it's like putting a little candlelight next to a car headlamp and trying to see the candlelight still. It's completely washed out. I turn this to Polaris at 35 times. Okay, no look. Put in the 10 millimeter 70 times, and I could see the secondary, and I was quite surprised. And so, if it says in the book, in the books or online, you need 76 millimeter, three to maybe three to four inches to, to separate them not with this one and so for a budget scope I mean that that says a lot about the quality of the optics in this little scope that it can split the Polaris double it wasn't easy it, it takes a trained eye to pick out that faint companion but it was there and this is from anybody that knows my location it's a very heavily light polluted and we had a near full moon which knocks it down a couple of magnitudes anyway plus the light pollution and I could see that ninth magnitude star just I mean and I mean just the separation is about 18 arc seconds quite wide but it's the the the, dis the, the the difference in magnitudes that makes it very very difficult if you have a, a telescope of this size or, or larger give it a go and uh, with it being Polaris it's always there uh, if you're in the UK up there but yeah so cracking little scope this to get get you started We're, we've currently got them in stock and if I sell out I can, I can get more in and uh, please order from our website and it helps this channel uh, uh, keep, keep going and uh, yeah so Perfect for looking at the moon, perfect uh, for you know looking at minor detail on the planets. Oh, and I did actually look at Mars at 70 times, and I thought I could just, and I mean just, make out some of the surface detail, but just. I couldn't quite make out the polar ice caps like I could with my Tal 4 inch refractor, but there was a, a little bit of mark in there on, on the disc. And so, yeah, for stick the wide. The wide angle eyepiece in the 25 millimeter and you're going to get some fantastic views of rich field areas star clusters globally clusters you know pleiades things like that and uh, from a, a darker sky some of the brighter galaxy and nebula and regards galaxies you know don't don't build up your hopes and think it's going to be they're going to be hubble that there will be what we call in the astronomy clubs uh, a fuzzy blob and, but the fact that you can see other galaxies with this telescope from a dark sky, the brighter ones, or relatively brighter ones, is, is quite incredible. So it is a, a true all-round telescope to get you started. So I hope this helps. Thank you very much for watching. Please check out the link in the description below where you can purchase. And I shall see you next time.